I'm Caleb Giddings from Gunnets Media. And it's been a long time since we've made a video. As you can see, I have hair now, and I got rid of my mustache. But today we're going to talk about something that I've been talking about a lot lately in other media, and that's the utility curve, specifically the U-shaped utility curve that small revolvers have. You may have heard a recent episode of Ballistic Radio that I was a guest on where we talked about the usefulness of small revolvers and I brought up this concept called a U-shaped utility curve and that looks something like this if you're wondering. So what we have is we have this graph right here, right? And on this graph we have two axes. Axes? Axes? Axes. We're going to go with axes. These two axes are skill and usefulness. Skill being down here and usefulness or utility, utility being up here. A U-shaped utility curve means that as the skill of the shooter increases, revolvers become less useful and then more useful. So we start up here at a very unskilled shooter and as they get more and more skilled, the usefulness changes and it goes along this utility curve. Now we're gonna explain exactly what I mean by that. Over here at the little to no skill end of the board, you have first time gun owners. This is the grandma who buys a J-frame or another small revolver because she needs a gun for personal protection. At this end of the utility curve, revolvers are very, very useful because they're simple. They're easy to load. They are easy to operate. And most importantly at this skill level, and why I believe they have such a high utility up here, they are difficult to negligently discharge. Because of these attributes at this low level of skill, the revolver is extremely useful. Now this does make a couple of assumptions. It assumes that you have the necessary hand strength to manipulate that DA trigger. If you don't, there might be better choices. But for the extreme novice, extreme neophyte shooter, the revolver at this level makes a whole lot of sense because it is very simple, it is very easy to load, it is very easy to operate, and again, it's very difficult to negligently discharge because this is a, this is a real concern for new shooters who aren't going to seek out training. This person down at this skill level right here, kind of in this bracket, does not seek training They don't go to the range. And they're largely uninterested in firearms ownership as a hobby, all right? So for these kind of people, the revolver makes sense because what they're looking for is a gun. A gun so that when someone kicks down their door at 2 a.m., they can scream, I called the police, I have a gun, and not be lying. Now let's talk about what happens on the downslope as revolvers become less useful as the shooter becomes more skilled, all right? So now you've started to seek training. You've gone to some classes. Maybe you've done, maybe you're getting into competition shooting. And I'm going to use rankings from competition shooting here as a way to make this somewhat more un, more easily understood. If you don't shoot competition, you really should be doing that. But we'll use those rankings so that you can kind of understand where this starts to take effect with people. So you've gone to a couple of, you, you started shooting, and we'll use IDPA for a couple of reasons. So you've started shooting IDPA, all right? 
and you've been going to regular matches, you've taken some training classes, you've gotten, you've started to get better at shooting. All of a sudden, this DA trigger becomes a real problem. It really does. The ability to manage the double action trigger and shoot rapidly while maintaining an acceptable sight picture is a real pain in the ass for people who are kind of in this skill band right here. And in this skill band, you're looking at people who are sharpshooter, sharp shooter, and you know, middling, and you know, kind of middle C class, USPSA shooters, all right? So sharpshooter, IDPA shooter, kind of a middle C class USPSA shooter. This is where this DA trigger management and managing a DA trigger while firing rapidly becomes a real problem for these people, all right? These guys are going to select away from small double action revolvers for personal defense because they get much better return on their training investment with something like a Glock 43 or an M&P shield. Because let's say you take a good shooting class every couple of years, all right? So you take, you know, one class a year and shoot five to 10 matches. And maybe you dry fire once, dry fire three times a month. So in this skill band, the return on investment that you're going to get from this level of investment is going to give you really great results with guns like a Glock 43 or an M&P shield. Because those guns are easier to shoot well than a small, compact, double action revolver. So here's your shield. G43 dudes in this band, all right? Again, you're gonna get better return on investment. So that's why the utility of these guns has started to fall off. Now you come out here, all right? And this is the specialist category. And I say specialist specifically because this isn't necessarily tied to a certain level of skill, although that's important. At this level of skill, you're, and here we're talking, you know, uh, I'm going to say IDPA Master, understanding that IDPA Master is a very, very big bucket that has some, that can have very low talented shooters, all the way up to some extremely talented shooters, all right? But from here, we'll say US, PSA, A class, and up, obviously, and INPA Masters just said INPA, an IDPA Masters, once you kind of hit this point and your skill goes up from here, your ability to manage the DA trigger gets a lot better. You have a better understanding of managing a trigger while you're working it quickly, even in double action, even with a heavier trigger pull, because you're investing a lot more time into actually getting good at shooting. So the mechanics of this, you get better at shooting, which allows you to employ some of the unique specialist features of the double action revolver. First, let's take a look at this kind of guy. Like, who is this person, all right? This person trains regularly, trains on the reg. They'll usually attend, uh, more, they'll attend more than two, classes if they're not into competition. They shoot major matches if they are into competition. And they dry fire regularly. And so for these people, fire, there we go. So for these people on this end of the circuit, this investment in training time produces better results, especially with the double action trigger. And again, like I just said, it allows you to employ some of the special features of 
a small lightweight revolver, not the least of which is that they are unbelievably easy to conceal. I'm wearing a fitted shirt. It's untucked, obviously, because I work in the firearms industry and I hate tucking in my shirts. Under this shirt, I have been carrying a seven shot J frame, all right? This is one of the lightest revolvers on the planet. This is the Airlight 351 PD. It's a seven shot 22 Magnum. It's made out of, I don't know, balloon farts and space age materials, all right? It is so light and so easy to conceal. I can take this gun literally anywhere, all right? I can conceal this gun in situations where concealing a shield or a Glock 43 would be problematic because of how light it is, because it weighs nothing it's very easy for me to practically conceal it so that's the first big example of advantages that the small lightweight revolver has you can conceal them in situations where concealing even a glock 43 even a glock 42 would be difficult and so we have the 351 pd the second example of specialist advantages that you get with these little guns is accuracy okay I know people don't think accuracy when they think small compact revolvers, but a small compact revolver is inherently more accurate than a small compact semi-automatic because the barrel is fixed to the frame. Assuming that all of the internal bits and all of the timing are done correctly at the factory, you're going to be able to get more accurate shots on target with this than you would with a similarly sized semi-automatic pistol. At this specialist tier, that matters to people. That matters a lot to people because we're going to be pushing these weapons in environments where it's going to be acting as the backup for a real gun, as it were. Or excuse me, it's going to be acting as the stand-in for a real gun. Another advantage to these small revolvers, something that we're talking about in this specialist role, is their ability to be utilized in compromised firing positions, okay? When we talk about these little guns, what am I talking about when I say a compromised firing position? Well, I used to live in a cold weather state. In a cold weather state, I can fire this gun through a coat. Now, there are limitations to this. You have to understand that I'm not taking a seven yard shot through a coat, okay? What I am talking about is I'm in contact with somebody. I'm in a situation where we are fighting in a phone booth and I need to shoot this person off of my body with a pocket carry gun in a coat, I can do that. You can't do that with a semi-automatic. Additionally, they are far more, far, far more capable at being fired from compromised firing positions or using compromised aiming points. So my revolver has Crimson Trace laser grips on it, and that means that if I am in a situation where I cannot, for whatever reason, bring the gun up to my eye line and take a proper sight picture, I can fire from a compromised firing position get a good sight picture because I'm using the laser as my primary aiming reference and still get good effect on target. The guns won't malfunction when fired from compromised firing positions. They won't malfunction when fired in contact with another person, which is suboptimal, but again, something in that specialized mission set that you may need. So when we deal with these revolvers, once you reach a certain level of skill, and once you reach a certain level of specific mission need, all of a sudden the small lightweight revolvers really start to make a lot of sense. So we're gonna review the video. Up here at the no skill level, revolvers make a lot of sense. They're simple, easy to load, easy to operate, hard to accidentally shoot someone with. Here in that middle tier, and a lot of shooters will struggle their entire lives to get out of this tier or they'll get here and they'll be happy with their skill level. And this is, to be honest, if you're an average C-class shooter or an IDPA sharpshooter, you're a better shooter than 98% of the gun-owning population. You just are. Sorry, people who can't shoot. That's a fact. In this tier, the revolver's a difficult choice. The DA trigger is going to be tough to manage. You're going to have better results from a shield or a Glock 43. And then up here, you start to get kind of good at shooting, like kind of good, not really good. Like really good is like over here with Ben Steger and Bob Vogel. But anyway, up in here, you get kind of good at shooting and all of a sudden, you the revolver starts to make more sense. It's more accurate. 
you can manage the DA trigger now. You can use it in situations where a small, compact, semi-automatic may not make sense. I'm not trying to get anybody to switch their backup gun or their primary carry to a revolver. I just want to point out that even now, in 2018, an old piece of technology still makes a lot of sense. Until next time, I'm Caleb Giddings, and remember, run your gun, not your mouth.